close your eyes and watch your breath. Start with a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths and see where the feeling of the breath is most prominent in the body. And focus your attention there. And then notice if it's comfortable. If long breathing is comfortable, keep it up. Otherwise, you can change to shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to get a sense of what feels good for the body right now, what feels refreshing. Relaxing if you're feeling tense, energizing if you're feeling tired. Because the breath is one of the few processes in the body that we have some conscious control over. So take advantage of that fact to create a good place in the, for the mind here in the present moment. Because the mind needs a place to rest, to gather its strength, and also a place to rest so it can see things clearly. In particular, it wants to see its own motions, what the mind does, how it thinks, how it forms an intention, how it decides whether to follow that intention or not. Because it's only when you see the mind clearly that you can train it well. Otherwise, you see things coming up in the mind that you don't like, and you just try to force them down. You don't really see where they come from. If you're going to undercut something, you have to undercut the cause. And to see the cause, you have to be very alert. So as we're staying with the breath, it's one of the qualities we're developing is alertness, seeing what's going on in the mind. And then you try to be mindful. In other words, you keep things in mind. Is what you want to act on and what you don't. What's a good thing to take as an intention and what's not. The things you've learned from the past, either from your own experience or from what you've heard other people say. You keep that in mind as you sort through the various intentions that come up in the mind. This way you, the mind gets trained. And this is a basic principle for happiness. We see lots of people in the world whose minds are not trained. They have all that they might want in terms of power or wealth, status, beauty. But if their minds are not trained, they can take those things and really abuse them and make themselves miserable. There are also people who don't have much in life, but their minds are well trained and they're perfectly happy. So happiness doesn't necessarily lie with things going well outside. It lies with how well you're trained to deal with things, to deal with pains as they come up, to deal with disappointments, and also to deal with times when things are going very well. How do you make sure that you don't get complacent? In this way, you become more and more in charge of your own happiness. And this is what the Buddha teaches, a, a skill for finding a true, lasting happiness. It doesn't depend on what your background is. It doesn't depend on where you come from. Everybody wants happiness. And as he pointed out, a lot of us are causing ourselves a lot of suffering in spite of our desire for happiness. It's because we don't know our minds well, don't see what we're doing objectively, from the point of view where we realize that we have some choices. So the meditation, giving you a place to stay in the present moment, gives you a place to see these things and then to act on what you see. So your mind can be your friend more than your enemy. In other words, it helps become an actual cause for happiness rather than tearing your happiness apart. That's why the mind is like an animal you have in your house. If the animal is well trained, or it's a pleasure to have around. If it's not well trained, it can create all kinds of messes. So take the time to train your mind. Because, because that's the big factor that makes the difference between happiness and suffering, pleasure and pain. A life that's well-shaped or a life that's poorly shaped, it all comes from the mind. <laughs>